Um, my name's Kim Herbert, and yes, I do wear two very different hats. Um, I am the Director of Advising for the College of Sciences, and I am an adjunct professor for communication. Um, what I tell my students is that just shows you a degree in communication can get you a job doing pretty much anything. <laughs> so, and you will see how one role has helped the other throughout the presentation. And I'm going to talk about learning styles, um, which is, a, we, you've heard it a lot, it's an inventory that, that many people around Old Dominion use. Um, and I will talk about how I use it as an advisor and also in my classroom. Um, I want to give credit where credit is due. Um, this learning style inventory, what it is, is it's a set of questions, it's a survey, similar to the Myers-Briggs, if you all are familiar with that, um, that will ask you questions on um, your likes, your dislikes, some things about your personality, and it will come up with a learning style for you. And there's four different styles, which I will highlight here in a minute. Um, it came from this book, How We Learn and Why We Don't. Um, and really the short story is it, of it is nearly um, 10 years ago when Sandy and Terry Matthews were doing the Ladders program, which was a program for students in academic difficulty. A rep showed up with a bunch of samples of this book and they didn't think anything of it and they handed it out to all the students and the students raved about it. So ever since then, we have used this in various contexts across campus. Um, and so that's the book. Um, how I use learning styles as an advisor. Um, many of you who are in advising role will tell you that, will, will say that most students when they're not performing well in a class will automatically blame it on the professor. And um, what we have found is that students need to understand how they learn best so they can adjust to their professor's teaching style. Um, so we will use this one-on-one -on -one with students. If a student is struggling in a class in a success advising situation, give them the inventory. They determine their learning style and we'll give them study tips based on their learning styles. Um, we use this obviously in orientation courses, um, you know, freshman orientation courses, success courses. And then we do hold various workshops around campus where we will administer this learning style. Okay, and so that leads me into teaching. <laughs> um, as an advisor, you know, I've given the survey to science students, and you would think students who are majoring in the same subject would have typical learning styles, but they all have various learning styles, and they all learn differently. So I took this a step further, and I did incorporate it into my classes. And this is actually a video, and if it works, great. If not, I can wing it, and I can explain. If you click on the picture, it should be a video. In 1930, the Republican-controlled House of Representatives, in an effort to alleviate the effects of the, anyone, anyone, the Great Depression, passed the, anyone, anyone, the tariff bill, the Hawley-Smoot Tariff Act, which anyone raised or lowered, raised tariffs, in an effort to collect more revenue for the federal government. Did it work? Anyone? <laughs> Anyone know the effects? It did not work, and the United States sank deeper into the Great Depression. Today, we have a similar debate over this. Anyone know what this is, class? Anyone? Anyone? <laughs> okay. Seen this before? You guys got the gist Last of it. I don't want to get into my time too much. So, a little history behind this. Um, when I first started teaching adjunct in 2003, I wasn't quite that bad, but no one taught me how to teach. And so I had a three hour class from 6 to 9 p.m. at night, and I put together a three hour PowerPoint and I sat up there and I lectured the entire time. And my students were bored to tears because not every student learns well that way. And they weren't engaged, I wasn't excited, and my teaching evaluations reflected that. So once I started working at Old Dominion, I realized that not every student does work the same, does learn the same way. So I started to incorporate learning styles into my lectures. And what I found is that students are more engaged, I'm more excited, grades are better, my evaluations are better, they actually say my class is fun, um, <laughs> which was different than before. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through each learning style. And I'm going to briefly give you the traits of the learning styles 
and as well as the study habits we provide to the students. And then I'll talk about how you can teach to these learning styles. I am doing a round table later, and um, during the round table session, I'll have the inventory if you want to take it yourself. Um, so that way you guys can see where you fall in the spectrum. So the first learning style is our sensor thinkers. School was made for the sensor thinker. These are the students who are very organized, they're very methodical. We know these students, they live and die by their syllabus. They sit right up front, they take excellent notes, they bring their textbook, everything's highlighted. They actually read before they go to class. Um, so these students, they will study best alone in a well-lit area, such somewhere such as the library. Um, they should take notes every five to 10 minutes while they're reading. And if the topic um, is not easy to memorize, because they usually memorize very well, they should break it into steps so they can memorize it. So how do I teach the sensor thinker? They're easy to teach, because school was made for the sensor thinker. Um, so what I do is I do incorporate those traditional teaching methods. I do have a PowerPoint um, lecture every class period for this type of student. Um, and everything is very organized on the PowerPoint. I provide study guides for exams because they like those bulleted lists and they like to know what they need to study. Um, I, I don't require a textbook for my class, but I do refer to the textbook for those students who do wish to buy it, such as the sensor thinker. Um, so that way they know what they need to read and what they need to study. Um, and then I do have a very organized syllabus and a schedule and everything is posted on Blackboard and updated regularly because they like to see that organization on Blackboard. So they're very easy to teach. Sensor feeler, this is me. These are your, these are your social, social kids in your class. Um, they're the ones who participate regularly. They will come up when they speak to you. They'll come up in a group at the end of class. Um, they are active in discussions. Um, they need to relate personally to the topic because they like to talk it out and they like to, to, you know, teach concepts to the class. So they do like to read out loud. They like to work with groups. They like to work with partners. So although it's, it's good that they work in groups, they should also practice alone and study alone to make sure they understand it when they take exams. Um, and it's good if they can um, teach something to someone, as was mentioned in previous um, lectures earlier, so that way they can talk it out and it will help them learn better. So teaching the sensor feeler, every class period I incorporate group work. After I lecture with my PowerPoint, we have group work to reinforce that idea so they can talk it out in a group. Um, I also hold workshops regularly throughout the semester. Um, yeah, I teach a speaking class, so they'll get together and they'll practice in groups. We call them workshop days and they'll critique one another. We also do workshops to study for the exam um, so they can help one another with that. Active discussions in class, pose questions, get them to participate, offer participation points, and then maybe have them present on things that they're learning. Um, I have a colleague who teaches history, she'll sign each um, student in the class, an event um, that they have to, to talk about in the class and they have to present on it because it will help them learn that event better. Intuitive thinker. Um, the intuitive thinker, they are very inquisitive. They need to see the overall picture first. So they're usually the ones that are going to the, the end of the chapter and they want to hear, they want to see how it ends up before they read everything else. Um, they usually do not memorize well, um, and they need to see patterns. So the way that they should study is they should, before they start reading, they need to look at the pictures, they need to look at the captions, look at the boxes that are in the textbooks. So they get the overall picture first. Um, and they always need to understand why something is the way it is. So relating it to their life and to the real world. Um, teaching the intuitive thinker. You have to provide an agenda. Every class period, I will post an agenda so they, they can see how that class is going to end up. They see the agenda items for the day. So they know where the class is going to end so they can get there mentally in their minds first. Um, a story I like to relay is Dr. Matthews. 
she once told me this story and it's resonated with me and it makes me think of an intuitive thinker. She once had a student years ago when she was teaching, um, she said drove her nuts, but this student's my best friend now because he, I always think of him. Um, whenever she would teach, he would raise his hand and say, what's your point, ma'am? What's your point, ma'am? <laughs> and so what she has taught me and I've brought to the classroom is whenever I put a statement out there, I have to tell them what the point is and I have to relate it to their life. Um, so, you know, it's, you have to use those examples and those real world concepts for these students. The intuitive feeler. I feel like these students are the most difficult to teach because I feel like they are um, not as engaged as I would hope that they are because they like to daydream. They're your creative learners. Um, they like abstract ideas, they dislike routine, so they are the complete opposite of your ST. Um, so it's complete opposite of that. So they are just like the NTs where they should start at the end of the chapter to get the overall picture. They need to use those mental images because they can draw up those mental images in their mind and they should also relate the material to something that they already know. Um, so how I teach the intuitive feeler, um, every semester I will distribute the very first class of student information sheet and they always roll their eyes and they have to fill it out, it's 25 questions, but it asks them about their favorite movies, um, their favorite you know, musicians, their favorite TV shows, their hobbies, and I will use that information sheet throughout the semester to relate what I'm teaching to something that they enjoy. So I'll bring in video clips of movies that they like, pop culture references. I do a song lyric exercise where we practice articulation and they'll read song lyrics, lyrics from their favorite artist. Um, and then I also incorporate images into PowerPoint so they can see, um, they can visualize what they're learning. Um, so, to end it with another video real, before you hit on it, um, I thought, who is, a who is the best example of someone who can teach to the intuitive feeler? And so I chose Mr. Miyagi from The Karate Kid. Now, you can tell I'm a child of the 80s, um, but if I were giving this to my, my students, I would probably use some more recent video clips because they look at me like I'm crazy if I mention the original Karate Kid. Um, there's a scene in this movie where Daniel wants to learn karate and he's begging him to teach him and Mr. Miyagi is telling him wax, wax the floor, sand the, the deck, paint the fence and at this particular scene um, Daniel is very frustrated and doesn't understand why he has to do this and you will see how Mr. Miyagi relates what he knows to karate so hopefully the clip works. <laughs> <laughs> Show me sand the floor. Sand the floor. Stand up. Show me sand the floor. Sand the floor. Sand the floor. Big sucker. Sand the floor. Sand the floor. Now show me wax on, wax off. Aye. <laughs> wax on, wax off. Hat on, wax on. <laughs> wax on, hat. Wax off. Hat. Concentrate. Look in my eye. Lock a hand. Thumb inside. Wax on, hat. Wax off. Hat. Wax on, hat. Wax off, hat. Wax on. Wax off. Rush. Show me paint the fence. Up, down. Up, down. Up, down. On the side. Look, I always look, I. Show me paint the house. Side, side. Okay, so you all get that. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Mr. Miyagi really related what Daniel 
um, was doing to karate, and that's a good way to do that with the um, NF learning style. And I do have the inventory later at the roundtable discussion, as well as I broke down a 50-minute class period and how I incorporate each learning style into my 50-minute class period, so I'll share that with you later if I see you later. Thank you.